Okay, uh, so uh, this is a kind of a small project with a neurosurgeon. So all these three uh, as a also uh, professional neurosurgeons. So they gave us a problem and data, and then I implemented systems, and then they evaluated. So that's how it goes. And yeah, so the problem we address here is a very, very standard problem in uh, yeah, medical imaging. So the use input to the, we, so using scanning systems like CT scanner or MRI, you get a series of photos, which means a three dimension volume. And then eventually you want to get this kind of uh, structure in the end, so isosurfaces. However, if you just simply apply simple thresholding, then you get this kind of messy thing. So in order to be useful, you have to remove or clean up this thing. So the problem is that this cleanup process is still a very labor intensive system and it requires professional knowledge and skill and it's very difficult to automate. So uh, yeah, there are many uh, research into automate this, like automatic methods or semi-automatic methods like graph card or active controls and many advanced methods. However, still from practitioner's point of view, at least the uh, people I, I talk to, they say that this method works fine. If it works fine, it's very good. But if it fails, it's very, very difficult to control and it's very difficult to understand the relationship between input parameters, many parameters, and the output. So in the end, they say that they still use uh, rely on manual segmentation, so very, very simple thresholding, and then manual cleanup. So that's uh, what they do now, and it takes a lot of time. So I saw it, and then we tried to propose a novel interaction method, user interface to facilitate this simple thresholding based manual thresholding. So that's what we do. So this is a kind of very different approach to automatic or semi-automatic approach. So this is fully manual in a sense. So uh, before introducing our work, let me introduce or uh, mention some related work in UI research. So uh, one of my students previously worked on this kind of technique. So user draws a line along the silhouette to the input and then system returns a volume. So this is kind of a nice system, but still, so this is kind of automatic approach. So you don't have control to the remaining area and uh, can be difficult to modify if the result is not satisfactory. So uh, in the same year, there was a UIST paper here uh, so this was designed for collect, uh, identifying linear structure. So again, user draws a two-dimensional stroke on the screen, and then system returns 3D pathways that similar to the, this stroke. So uh, yeah, so this is very useful again, but uh, this is designed for one-way, 1D pathway selection, and this is not designed for 3D uh, surfaces. And more recently, uh, there are similar work to ours. So this one, again, use 2D user input. So here, here, user pick up eraser tool, and they want to erase this yellow part, and they just draw 1D stroke, uh, stroke on the screen using eraser tool, and then you will get this result. So what they do is to analyze the uh, space, and then identify corresponding target features, and then uh, change the parameter transparency, make them transparency. So this is very similar to ours on the data, but uh, the, their goal is still basically visualization. So they con tweak visualization parameters for volume rendering, and this is not designed for binary segmentation as in our case. So that's the related work, and then let me move on to our method. So let me first describe the current practice. So very basic method. So uh, yeah, if you, you apply the high threshold, you see a big structure but lose details. And if you lower the threshold, you can see details, but then you see lots of clutters. So you have to manually remove them. So you have to first partition an area, including small structure, and then remove clutters by lassos. And then you combine uh, this result and this result this way. So that's the current practice. So uh, may sound simple and easy, but you know all these operations are 3D operation using 2D view. So it's actually very very tedious. So you have to rotate and drag uh, control points and then rotate and lower control points, which is actually takes lots of time. So that's a problem we wanted to address. And so let me show you a demo, I guess.
yeah, I'm switching to desktop, but can be <laughs> difficult. Yeah, something here. Maybe this is sub screen. Um, oh, it's control should be, yeah, sorry, doesn't work. <laughs> Challenge. I don't see anything here, so <laughs> I have to operate using this screen. Oops. So, uh, yeah. So uh, this is an example. Oops, not good. Where's the mouse? And do you know how to? Hmm? こっちがこうなってるから。Oops. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So let me try. So, uh, yeah, so you, if you uh, higher the threshold, you see the big structure, but as you lower the threshold, you see lots of details. So you go back and forth and then pick up a sweet spot somewhere here. And then uh, currently people use this kind of lasso tool frequently. So lassoing and then rotate and lasso and rotate. As you see, it takes a lot of time. And if you want to get structure somewhere here, then you have to partition here using rubber bonding or bounding box, and then you know, lower the threshold, and then combine the two. So it, it's very uh, tedious. And after looking at you know, doctors doing this long time, I thought that, well, you know, it's a structure already visible, right? So it's visible here. So instead of removing clutter, just click the target thing, and then you will get this connected component. And then uh, click this here, and then click this component. And then yeah, you can get this uh, cleanup. And then you can also change threshold still to uh, get other structures. So uh, say you want to get this one. So in this, way, in this way, you can very efficiently apply different threshold to different locations, and then you will get this result. So yeah, maybe obvious, but at least uh, you know, after talking to the uh, collaborators, this is very new and can be very useful. And another tool is, uh, this is flood field tool. And another tool is a uh, uh, brush tool. So suppose you want to get some more minor structure. Say, yeah, there's something here. Suppose you want to get this structure. And if you apply flood hill to get here, you know, you get this, which is not good. So you, you may want to do some more local operations. So to do so, uh, we provide a brush tool. So you put, so uh, you get a brush tool, and then apply brush, and then you can paint very locally. In addition, you know, if there's something missing here, you can locally change the threshold, lower the threshold using keyboard. And then, you know, inside this cursor, you, up, you apply a lower threshold. So in this way, uh, you can actually paint uh, this kind of structure. And here's another example. So uh, say you have something like this, and then say you want to do this. And say you want to get something is here. So let's get it. And then you zoom in and then choose brush tool, and then start drawing, and then use the mouse cursor to adjust size and uh, threshold, and then you can you know, actually paint, uh, you know, a trace uh, uh, vessel. And one more tool is uh, this one. So if you have uh, something like this, oops, yeah, so here, 
Maybe you may want to paint this region this way, and then you paint this region. And then suppose, so lower the threshold inside, and then you can connect it. So, uh, so this area is get by high threshold, this is get by lower threshold. But you see some discontinuity. So in that case, you can apply this smoothing tool to uh, you know, ease out this uh, discontinuity. Yeah. So another thing is that so uh, it's it's difficult to demonstrate. So suppose you have uh, this structure here and flood here, and then if you put a castle here, and then if you locally change the threshold too much, for example, too high. If you set the threshold too high. Yeah, if you set the, uh, so it's not working well, but if you set the threshold too discontinuous, then something wrong happens. So we, we call this a ghost ice surface, and then, uh, yeah, I will describe this more later. So can we switch back? So, uh, yeah, so as I said, what we do is like this. So set a higher threshold and then apply flood field to get here. And then if you want to apply different threshold, you pick a brush and then locally change the different threshold. And then, uh, so that's the result. And internally, what we do is uh, actually painting a kind of threshold field. So we assign different threshold value to each individual pixel. And then painting interface provides quick access, efficient access to this threshold field. So in another word, uh, existing traditional use system use binary partitioning, you know, inside or outside. Uh, instead, we use a kind of continuous grayscale field to get this kind of result. So yeah, here's a mo more explanation. So if you have intensity value and if you have a high threshold, you get only the large vessels. And low threshold, you see small vessels, but also clutters. And our threshold adaptively changes the threshold values. And so, yeah, so let me briefly describe technical details. So one aspect is a brush tool. So brush tool uh, is you use a traces vessels on the screen, a 2D device, 2D operation. And if it's basically using projection, so from eye and uh, castle, and then you project it. However, you know, if nothing is there already, what, how do you determine the depth? So that's a problem to address. And let me briefly explain it. Um, so here's the explanation. So you have a screen here, and then you have a currently visible this thing here. And if your mouse cursor is here, you get this point. Mass castle is here, this get point. But if you mass castle go here, you know, there's no way where it is. However, we uh, progressively changes, uh, you know, threshold inside, and then you get a new surface, and then you move mass castle here to project here, and then move the castle here, and then you project and then progress here, and then you move mass castle here. So you can progressively you know, grows the surface and then continuously project the point. So in this way, you can efficiently uh, trace a blood vessel in a 3D screen. Yeah, so uh, let me skip a couple of other details. And yeah, so ghost ice surface. So suppose you have this uh, reasonable uh, large vessel here, but if you put a castle here, and then intentionally, wrong, mistakenly high, uh, apply very high threshold here, you will see this kind of ice surface. But this is not really intrinsic into the data. So this should be, you know, wrong. So this, the system pro mark these areas into green and then give warning, pro uh, provide feedback to the user. So how does this work? So uh, yeah, so this is the uh, ice surface here. And then if you apply, um, castle here, 
and then uh, high threshold, and how you identify this uh, problem. So our implementation is like this. So intensity gradient is like this. And then isosurface should actually be perpendicular to this intensity gradient if it works well. However, you know, these problematic regions, you know, surface normal is usually aligned, ideally aligned, but here surface normal is not aligned with intensity gradient. So that's what we, how we identify ghost surfaces and then paint them into green. So, uh, yeah, we run a simple uh, user study. And yeah, we recruited four professional neurosurgeons. Yeah, four maybe sounds very few, but we recruited professional, professional neurosurgeons uh, taking care of patients every day. So it's very you know, expensive, and I think four is use, uh, good enough to get initial feedback. And we compare, compared our two with a traditional method, what they use every day. And uh, yeah, and in order to remove exploration time, which can be very uh, random, so we ask, ask them to repeat the same operation five times. You know, we ask them to identify specific structure and then ask them to get it using this interface and this interface. And this is very limited situation, but at least in this limited situation, uh, we saw that conventional method takes like 200. Uh, seconds, and then our method takes only you know, 50 seconds or 100 seconds, so roughly half time. And we also uh, check the accuracy or quality, and ask somebody else to evaluate the quality, and then the quality is not, didn't drop. So we preserving quality, and then roughly doubles the speed. So it's a positive result. So yeah, so in conclusion, I presented a painting user interface for volume segmentation, like flood field, brush tool, uh, eraser tool, and other tool. So basic idea is to introduce interesting, a uh, useful metaphor for this task. And internally, our contribution is the introduction of threshold field. Uh, so instead of using binary value uh, field, we introduce a continuous grayscale value. And we uh, did an evaluation, and then it works well, at, at least in this setup. And what we did is a kind of simple, and we see that this is a kind of starting point, but I believe that there are many things to do. So, yeah, so medical imaging is a very important problem, you know, people are using every day, and it's very critical to our lives. And computer vision people and the machine learning people working on this problem long time and lots of things done. But, you know, there are many things more to do from user interface point of view. So this presentation is a kind of invitation you guys to join uh, this kind of research. I think there are many interesting things to do. Uh, so that's my presentation, and sorry for the trouble, and thank you very much. Okay, so I can answer questions at the podium. So just a quick announcement as a chair. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just lunch guide. So in the, in the ballroom, next room, we have a session for...